Hello and welcome back to Treasures of the Household Cavalry, video podcast series that examines some of the remarkable items in the Household Cavalry's collection. Last week I looked at the Zetland Trophy, shown here in the top left corner. This week I want to take you to Cyprus in the mid-1950s where the Royal Horse Guards were deployed to assist with the suppression of a nationalist uprising led by the self-styled Colonel Grievous. Grievous, shown here on the left with his terrorists and on the right in the most wanted men identification booklet issued to all troops, was the military head of Aoka. This was the Greek Cypriot armed organisation that was dedicated to ending British rule of the island achieving self-determination for the islanders and eventual union with Greece. During their tour with the UN in Cyprus, which lasted from February 1956 to May 1959, the Blues sadly lost 10 officers and men, including the regimental medical officer, and carried out a variety of different roles. These included separating the warring Greek and Turkish Cypriots whilst also trying to root out Aoka and occasionally patrolling on mules in order not to alert village dogs. The regiment returned from Cyprus with some very curious spoils of war that are now in the museum. These spoils included not only the Aoka flags already shown, but homemade guns and pipe bombs. One of the blues who was wounded in Cyprus was Cornet Oberon War, shown on the left of this slide. Oberon, or Bron as he was usually known, was a national service officer and the eccentric son of the famously cantankerous novelist Evelyn War, shown on the right. Evelyn had served with the Blues in the Second World War, having first been rejected for the Welsh Guards by Colonel Cheekert Leatham, who famously said of War, I know an officer when I see one, and war is a shit who wears suede shoes. It was whilst on sick leave from the Blues in 1944 that War wrote his most celebrated novel, Brideshead Revisited. Fourteen years later, Evelyn's son Bron was posted to Cyprus, which his father contemptuously described as going to Cyprus to be stoned by schoolgirls. These were words which he must have regretted when Brom was badly injured while trying to clear the machine gun on his armoured car. In defiance of any training he'd received on the subject of clearing jammed guns, Brom seized the machine gun by the muzzle and shook it, until it fired six rounds through him, resulting in the loss of a finger, one lung, several ribs and his spleen. After months in hospital, during which he nearly died, Brom was medically discharged and he never fully recovered. Despite his injury, Ron went on to make a successful career as a journalist, became famous for his column in Private Eye, and led campaigns in favour of smoking and drinking, and somewhat eccentrically, against the consumption of hamburgers. Ron died at the early age of 61 in 2001, primarily as a result of his wounds and his smoking. Unfortunately, this has to be the last in the current series of Treasures of the Household Cavalry. This is not because I've run out of things to talk about, quite the reverse. I can't wait to tell you about the Chinese executioner's sword and Trumpeter Edward's tunic, but unfortunately I can't access any of these things during lockdown. So until life returns to some kind of normality, I'm going to be posting a new weekly series which will look at the quirkier side of the histories of our regiments. In the meantime, stay well and stay safe.